great batch Jones and Blaine have played in every test this season and Michael Owens the 12th man and looking at the Pakistan team now two changes forced on them through injury Asif Mushtabar is not playing and Atif Rauf comes in they've changed the third seamer as well Atar Rahman has a thigh problem and he makes way for Amir Nazir well it was an all-action day and it started with the very first ball first ball of the test match and uh, oh he's caught is he i thought he was for a moment goodness me and a very ambitious shot from saeed anwar let's have a look at it again we may see in this angle here now pretty loose shot but he's dragged that across and yes it has carried to ken rutherford round about uh, waist height i guess falling across to his left now bear in mind ken rutherford had, has had that hand injury we can see the left hand there on the hip very badly bruised Danny Morrison with the ball bowling with the breeze oh, that's not a bad delivery but the first runs of the test match away down to fine leg and Simon Dool down there return so Pakistan underway Saeed Anwar one run one. Just, again just straying down the leg side Again, down the leg side, turned away, and uh, a long run round there, but there's the first boundary of the Pakistan innings, too wide for Danny Morrison to drag it in. Good. Oh, it's dropped. Tony Blaine puts it down. I'm sure that was an edge, the replay will tell us, but a big edge straight through to Blaine, and down it went. Well, there's no doubt that this was an edge. It was just a half, half approach to play this ball. You can see he's run it off the face. And Tony Blaine was committed to go because it's doubtful it would have carried through to Mark Grapatch. was heading in his direction. But in the end, it's a case of just hitting the glove and going straight to ground. And here's more runs, just uh, guiding it through the gully region. It may go all the way. It's fairly lush, the outfield down there. In fact, it does pull up. Leah Hartland into the test match in place of uh, Pocock. Again, an edge, but it's going straight past third slip, and that'll be all the way to the boundary for four. Well, he's playing this well, too. That's going just behind square. A chase for Morrison. That's going very fine. It's going to beat Morrison. In fact, it beats everybody. Morrison not in the picture. It was hit very fine, and he's fairly wide where he should be. Driving, and he's going to get that behind point for four. That'll go all the way. Thompson won't get it. And, oh, we're seeing some strokes now from Saeed Umwa. Oh, he goes for that. He's hitting it in the air. Is it going to go over the top of Pringle? It does. Six. Yes, and uh, short delivery. Sahel goes for the hook, top edge is it, and Pringle trying to get in the position. Morrison was just checking to see whether it actually did clear the fence for six. Oh, that's nicely played. That's four runs straight onto the pads. And Saeed Anwar rips it away to bring up Pakistan's 50. He might have another four here. He's got it at a way down back at a point, and that is another four. Second consecutive boundary for Saeed Anwar. Chance of a run out here. KT Francis, the umpire at the striker's end, says not out. A good work by Rutherford. And one run off the over, 55 without loss. Wants a single this time, and a bad misfield by Duell, and that's going to concede an extra run, having to shift a bit, but getting there, so what should have been one has turned into three. And Duell just stroking that one out. Oh, what a beautiful shot. That just literally was caressed through the covers. It's rocking all the way off the face of the bat. So Saeed Anwar, he's... Uh, Hurried on to 37. Sahail on 36. Driving. Oh, lovely shot. That's through the covers for four. Overpitched and wide and severely punished. Matthew Hart bowling to Sahail. 
Well, that's in the air, and that's hit very, very firmly indeed by Sahail. What a good shot. So Hart encouraging the drive, and he got it. Inside Amwa is hitting the ball through mid wicket for four. A lovely shot from Side Amwa. She gets down, gets the ball very close to the line of his pads, and with nobody out there at all, it's a very easy shot to play, but you do need the confidence to do it. And uh, certainly Said Anwar has that. But the field just stays up, encouraging him to perhaps try it from a delivery which is not on to do so. Well, he's down the pitch again, and he's done it a second time. And that's his 50 and the Pakistan 100. It's right over the top of the fence. And it's the second time he's been past 50 in a test, and it's the second time consecutively. Quickly called for a chance of a run out. And he's gone to the third umpire. Paul Unwin has thrown the stumps down. And this could be the first wicket that New Zealanders think it is. Let's go to the third umpire and have a look. Well, he always looks as though he's going to struggle so hail to get to the other end if it was cleanly fielded and also the stumps were thrown down as they were. Unwin on his knees. And we see the replay there. It's touch and go. And uh, now he's given it the green light. Batsman got the benefit of the doubt. There was doubt there. It was a near thing. He wants a single for his half century. He's got to go this time, and that's well run. And a half century for Amar Sahel. And we see the scoring shots here, 28. Just here, two fours and one six. That's it, very fine. Pringle's really going to have to scramble to get round the boundary. He can't do it. And that's four runs. And that's flown away for four more. Oh, crikey, that got there quickly. Ten off the over, and it's 117 without loss. Danny Morrison bowls the last ball of the session, a session which has belonged very much to Pakistan, and they go to lunch at 120 without loss. Just pushing that away behind point. No attempt to hit it hard. It just runs off the face of the bat. Another couple of runs, and they really are coming at will. Slip, the only one there, and the first Pakistani wicket has gone. Well, we talked about uh, bowling off sideline to these left-handers, and this is where you've got to bowl. You've got to angle across them like that, get them to play through the onside, hit a grip against the movement, and fortunately it's gone to the best pair of hands at the moment in New Zealand cricket, Brian Young. Saeed Anwar is on his way for 69, 125 for one. So, Atif Rolf, he hasn't had a bat in New Zealand yet. He's out here because the opener went. Yes, once too often looking to play through the onside of a delivery passing by off stump. And that's a very good catch from Brian Young because, like the batsman, he would have been expecting that ball to go through the onside, so he would have been surprised somewhat. But he takes them so easily, and he's got this habit of just putting them in the pocket. But first ball to Atif Rolf. And he's off the mark immediately. Not a good ball from Simon Dool. Looking for the second, but uh, they won't get it. Nearly rolled back onto the stumps. He was very quick with the footwork, Sir Hale. Uh, he is allowed to do that. Can't use his hands. Driving. Good looking shot. That'll race away for four. It's a long boundary, but it uh, should make the grade out there. And it does. So over pitching, and all the good work is undone. Driving, driving very well is Rolf. And that's the second time it's gone down to the long off boundary. Flashing shot and he's caught. Frustration finally 
sits in. Sahail is caught by Hartlands, and New Zealand have their second wicket. Well, the tactics have certainly paid off here, as we can see Sahail losing his wickets. Simon Dahl outside the off stump, giving a bit of room, but Sahail not in quite the same mood. Hits the catch straight to Hartland in the gully. Pakistan lose their second wicket, and they're two for 147. That's got rid of Sahail. And Simon Dool has his second wicket. So here's the replay of Sohail's dismissal. Good catch by Hartland. Good comfortable height and well taken. Rather a gift delivery for Sally Malik to get off the mark. And he just takes the one. He goes for it and just away from the field. And away it goes down to the fence for four. Salim Malik, the skipper, is out there with the new man, Atif Ralph. And Salim Malik is just about to break a record for Pakistan. And uh, look down that list. Majid Khan in fourth place. Salim Malik in fifth. But, oh, they're equal. So if he gets a run, he'll uh, slip up to number four. There's Majid Khan. About to lose the fourth spot by the look of things. And there it is, the uh, run that he was after to get past Majid Khan, although he probably wasn't aware of it, but he's going to come back for a comfortable two. So Salim Malik, the skipper, he got that fine hundred in Wellington. And there's Majid. Doesn't look too depressed, does he? That's a good ball from Danny Morrison, whistling through to Tony Blaine, and lucky not to catch the edge. Danny Morrison now bowling to a right-hander, and I suspect that he'd prefer that. Oh, that's a good catch, a magnificent catch. What a wonderful catch at first slip. And Morrison can only just smile ruefully, because at last he has the reward that he's been looking for, and Artie Froth. His first innings in Test cricket ends. Goodish delivery, bouncing. And we saw second slip going towards it, but it was always Great Batch's catch there at first slip, and he took a good one in the end. And so now Pakistan, 159 for three. He just bounced a little, moved away. And those two wouldn't want to be further apart than that. Yep. And that's a nice shot from... Darcy to open his scoring. And just two runs. Well, there's a long way to go. It was all Pakistan in the first session. It's been all New Zealand in the second. And that's hit beautifully by Darcy for four. He's only just ambling down the pitch. And the ball is racing across the outfield for his first boundary. Oh, and he's driving down the ground this time. Salim Malik has hit that ball beautifully. That's just going to race through to the boundary for four down at long on. Oh, it's in the air, but it's safe. And it's going to run all the way down to the third man boundary. And that's a lovely shot, and that's going to go through and all the way. That's a lovely shot from Basad Ali. It's also at the end of the over, 186 for three. He's left this way on the onside with a minimum of fuss, and it's over the top, six runs. Well, Danny Morrison has been lifted over mid-wicket for six. Just as simple as that, eh? All timing. It's lifted over square leg. Beautiful, beautiful shot there, beautiful shot. Looking in very fine form and dangerous, Basad Ali. Tries again, and no, says the umpire. Must have been close. Let's have a look. Russell Morrison, that one there, just angling in off the seam. It's put him pretty much in middle stump, and uh, by KT Francis says not out. Well, the only thing he must be thinking, Grant, may be going down leg, but I don't know. Hit him in front of middle stump there. And uh, the appeals of the New Zealanders, and Danny Morris in particular, says it all. Oh, Matthew Hart has 
struck bowling Salih Malik. And it's 195 for four. Well, what an excellent session this has been for New Zealand and Matthew Hart. Getting one through the defences of Salim Malik, the captain, just going on and through the gate there. It's an excellent dismissal. Matthew Hart, his second test wicket. Salim Malik on his way for 18, and Pakistan 195 for four. Almost looking for turn here, and he's leaving a gap there between bat and pad, and Matthew Hart right on line. Just goes on a bit with the arm, if you like, through the defences, and he gets him bowled. There's a side-on view of the dismissal. And can't quite understand it at all. Oh, he's lifted that. That's a beautiful shot again. Everybody looks to the umpire. That's another six. Morrison down the leg side. And this time it's onto the terraces. And up come the 200 for Pakistan. And it's a Matthew Hart with a wicket in his previous over to bowl to Inzabam. Again, he gives him a full toss. This time he's punished. Enzimam off the mark with a boundary. Edge and caught. Enzimam is gone. And Dool, with the first ball of a new spell, takes the wicket. Well, the change in tactics from Relaford, and that's all credit to him and the team. Enzimam on his way for just five. We see Dool Bolson, one outside off stump. He, f he f fends it, if you like. It's a nick. Gray Patch takes a very good catch at first. The blow down. Pakistan lose their fifth wicket. And they're 206 for five. And now Dool is the bowler. Good straight delivery. The new batsman wants a run immediately and takes it comfortably. Here's the previous dismissal. Here's Inzimam here. Poking it one outside the off stump. Getting the nick. Excellent catch by Mark Greatbatch, his second of the innings. And after only nine balls, Inzimam is on his way. And that, uh, that's a very healthy sight for New Zealand. And uh, the Kiwis too, very excited about that. And so they should be. One slip there, it's in the air, it races down for four, but uh, Brian Young diving away to his right. Replay will be interesting. Well, I guess the field is the talking point here after this, but uh, he's cut away at that, and Brian Young, I believe, has got a hand on that. I think it's gone uh, through the outstretched right hand and just popped up above it. Yes, he's definitely got a hand on it, but it's still had enough weight on it to carry it down to the fence. Strange looking shot, just lobbing it over Pringle's head. Miscued it completely, hit it high on the bat, and it just went tantalizingly over the bowler's head. Well, this is Chris Pringle's off spinner. This is one of his trademarks he uses in one day cricket, particularly towards the end of the innings. The slower ball, the off spinner, and it completely deceives the batsman who is through the shot before the ball arrives. Oh, that's down first slip this time he's nicked it and certainly Brian Young got a hand on it again but it went down so Chris Pringle not having any luck at all well this is like a mirror of the very first session of the day we've uh, seen two chances go down very quickly both to the same player both difficult ones now Glenn Turner's got a theory about how wide you stand if you're the only one slip there you really left in no man's land and we talk about having hindsight and if we look at the field now John Morrison after this replay, we may just see that uh, Ken Rutherford has decided now that we're warranting two slips. Yes, uh, Mark Raybatch has come in, but because there was only one slip, Brian Young went wider, and that made that catch more difficult. Yeah. And it's uh, whistles through to Tony Blaine. End of the over, 2 one eight for five. And we've got a man in short cover now. Still got the two slips in a gully. Very similar sort of shot, and it's uh, got through. Shane Thompson made a bit of a mess. Through to the boundary for four more. Oh, it's edged again. That dropped short of uh, Great Batch, but uh, certainly very encouraging in the slip cordon. Full toss, swung away. 
And that was a real gift. And he's hit it for six. Rashid Latif has hit Matthew Hart for six. It's 249 for five. Shane Thompson for the first time. He bowls a full toss. And that's going to the fence for four runs. A lot of full tosses bowled by the New Zealand bowlers today. Yes, with Matthew Hart bowled a easy full toss for the last ball of last over. The six are went, and then we see there Bassett Ali collecting Shane Thompson's full P, and he makes 50. He's 51. Nicely dabbed away, giving Jones a bit of a chase. And another single for Bassett Ali. This is Shane Thompson continuing. Latif really going after it. Just a comfortable catch by Blair Hartland. So that really came out of nothing. The match just meandering along. Thompson, you see the drift in the air. It's really gone wide, and Latif has gone to fetch it and just spooned the catch really quite comfortably to Blair Hartland, who accepts it. Nonchalance, really. Quite happy to see him go. 254 for six now, Pakistan. That ball was drifting a fair way away, and he went after it. He has tempted fate in the last over or so. And Shane Thompson getting some lift, uh, drift here. Can't keep it down. And good catch by Blair Hartman. Pretty straightforward one. Oh. It's drifting in, as you see, to the left-handers. But uh, Wazim Akram clamping down on it. And he's underway as he pushes it out on the leg side. Oh, he's driven that beautifully, has Akram, and that's going to be four. Yeah. Oh, it's up in the air, that's going to be caught. Yeah. Who's got it? It's great batch who's got it, his third catch. And so Morrison gets the reward, Akram doesn't stay, Akram's rubbing his shoulder. But great batch has the result. Now, Akram was really uh, giving a very strong indication that it came from his shoulder, but it might have come from his glove and his bat on the way through. We'll have to look at it again. Yes, well, that's the point, although he's uh, having some words just to his mate, not to the umpire. But this was a good bouncer from Morrison. Deserved uh, some good result. Ooh. Well, it may well have just hit him on the shoulder. Very fortunate not to, to get it in the visor. So that's a good, fast, straight bouncer from Morrison. Brings the dismissal of Wazim Akram. 261 for seven, Pakistan. Let's have a look at this uh, catch again because certainly Akron gave an indication that it was only from his shoulder. So this is from uh, mid on camera. Well, he did get his gloves pretty high there. And so looking at that angle there, there was a possibility that it did flick it. And then onto his shoulder. The thing is, he played it very poorly. Morrison got it up into the right place. And so I'm quite happy with that dismissal. You can see that he's lost poise considerably. And there wasn't much doubt about the enthusiasm of the New Zealanders. Of course, there would be anyway. And Morrison rewarded with his second wicket. He's got two for 80 now. Yes, New Zealand will be rather happy with the way things have turned around since lunch, taking those seven wickets. But they had been very loose with their bowling, and they've gone for far too many. And there's four more from Basad Ali. That's exactly what Glenn Turner is talking about. Uh, Akram Raza is going to get his first runs and it will run all the way to the boundary but it wasn't a convincing stroke that's a nice looking shot in fact he's timed it beautifully he's beaten Hartland and that's four runs it's hammered away on the offside again should be overhauled by Andrew Jones and Akram Raza has two further runs Basad Ali comes down and he's clouded this one and over the top, is it? Yes, it is. A third six for Basad Ali. Well, ouch. That hurt Simon Dahl. Here he is just in a second delivery of the over, this new spell, and Basad Ali down the wicket, hits it on the up, over extra cover, into the terraces for six. Not the normal sort of shot you would see 
off a medium pace bowler in a test match grant well that's nicely played by Akram Raza well, he's certainly attacking here and there's a chance Andrew Jones couldn't hold it. He had a long time to wait. Well, it looked as though he actually had it in control, Jones, too. It just fell out, but there's Bassett Harley going for a big slog, really. Not a great shot at all. Skying it to mid on. A difficult catch for Jones. He's running backwards. It's nicely played away back at a point. The fieldsman can give that away. That's another boundary for Bassett Harley. Oh, beautifully played by Akram Raza. Magnificent cover drive, and that's four runs. Driving, and this one is a big shot over the top, and where's that gone? Four runs. It's a cracking cut shot. What a whistle away to the boundary for four. Well, all the good work, undone with the last ball. 320 for seven. It's in the air, but it's wide of second slip, and it runs away down for four. Again, giving it a flirt, Bassett Ali. Three balls to go. He's gone again. Oh, dear, oh, me. He's dropped. Well, he hit it firmly enough, but it was in the air, and it's gone down. Well, a chance for New Zealand on the first ball of the day, and another one at almost the last ball of the day. Blair Hartland must have known this was on its way. His previous ball, he got a warm-up. Here we are, the last ball of the day's play. And Raza does well, and he keeps his wicket intact. So 334 for seven, Pakistan, having been sent into bat, this man, Basit Ali, on 98. He's been the star of the day, a very impressive knock. It's had its moments, but he's still there. So a good effort from Pakistan. Basit Ali really started with a hiss and a roar, but was slowed as the Kiwi bowlers tightened up. But his 98 still came off 122 balls, nine fours and three sixes, and a partnership of 73 for the eighth wicket with Akram Raza. And looking at the New Zealand bowling figures, well, they really suffered six chances going down in all. Simon Dool the most successful in terms of wickets. Chris Pringle bowling well without much luck. So 3.34 it was. Pakistan at the first day. Kamar Ahmed, your assessment of the day? I think I'm, I'm satisfied as, as far as Pakistan point of view is concerned. I think they did very well before lunch. And they, then there's the, that slump when they lost five wickets for 87 runs. And the recovery by Basit Ali, tremendous batting by Basit Ali, who's 98 not out. A slight uh, bit of nerves there at the end, but uh, surely he's batted superbly. And your assessment of the pitch for day two? The pitch is, does, there's no danger. There's nothing wrong with the pitch. The pitch is made, tailor-made for batting. And I think our batsman was rather complacent between lunch and tea, and that's why the wickets fell. All right, Kamar, thanks for those comments. So there we have it. Highlights of day one in this Bank of New Zealand test between New Zealand and Pakistan. Pakistan finishing 3.34 for seven. I hope you can join us tomorrow. Thanks for joining us on One Word of Sport for our highlights of the second day of this third cricket test in the Bank of New Zealand series, New Zealand against Pakistan. Another good summer's day in Christchurch. The pitch still looking good for batting. And Pakistan resuming at 334 for seven. At the crease, Basit Ali and Akran Raza. And we pick up our highlights of the second day with Danny Morrison bowling to Basit Ali. Pushes it on the onside. He'll pick up one. I think that's all he'll get. Yes, so he's on to 99. Very much a run-saving field. Looking to protect, to keep him on 99 as long as possible. Pushes it out on the leg side. It's a tight single, but he's through. He throws a good one, hits the stumps, and there's an appeal. But uh, Bassett Ali is the man of the moment. 100 runs. Well, congratulations, Basad Ali. He's ridden his luck pretty well. He's had uh, a number of chances go begging from the edge of the bat. One at point last ball of last night, and uh, 
One of the interesting things here as he brings it up is to see that the guy coming in does not ground as bad at all. Now he's a mile out there. The umpire has not even gone for the, the screen for the third umpire. The fieldsman reacted afterwards as if to say, well, it's got to be worth a, a look at the screen, but he didn't even make an effort to ground the bat. And he's out by a mile. That's quite astonishing, John. That's absolutely staggering, isn't it? We've got the technology up here. Uh, it's not asked for. He's a yard out. And that really is ridiculous. Oh, he pulls it away. It's in the air. It's just clear of the field. Hasn't got much uh, way on it. But a very comfortable two, as Shane Thompson collects. in the air and it's caught and Basadali's gone. Hartham gets the catch and Basadali has been dismissed by Pringle giving Pringle his first wicket but my word that's well deserved. Yes well Basadali has played some great shots and played some very loose ones. He's been an entertainer but he's been very fortunate until this moment and just spooning it up there to Hartland in the covers. So Basadali is gone for 103 and Pakistan now lost their eight wicket at 3-3-9. So Basadali this morning just a touch lucky to get the 100 and out straight afterwards. Well, it looked like a, a fairly benign delivery. But Basadali looked as though he might have been trying to hit it onside. It's difficult, actually. He just spooned it up almost as though it was willful. see it there too that Waka Yunus is prepared to play towards the pitch of the ball secure that the ball will come on and he opens his scoring with a couple oh he's pulling it and he's going to be out caught he's caught it mid on Dool has it and Morrison gets his third wicket Waka Yunus comes and goes very quickly Pakistan have lost their ninth wicket well Morrison now try getting his just rewards really and that's the sort of shot that we've seen Basadali try to play, just short of a length, not able to get it over mid on, just spooning it up. So Pakistan now 344 for nine. Here's Aman Nazir playing his first ball of this test series. Oh, and he might not get too many either. Lovely little outswinger from Morrison to greet him. And the wicket again, just short of a length from Morrison. And the sort of shot that Eunice tackled there would be very difficult to play even by a batsman. And just spooning it up to duel at mid-on. Well, that last shot there showed a bit of bounce and a bit of pace from the pitch, so it cramped him. So it really was a very ambitious shot. And duel had a simple catch at mid-on. and gets his fourth wicket and ends the Pakistan innings at 344. Well, we saw him play and miss the previous delivery and he didn't look as though he was getting in line with the ball at all. And look at this one here, just a one straight up. Legs out, <laughs> feet outside, legs stump. And uh, I'm afraid Mr Nazir does look like a number 11 batsman. But Morrison is quite happy with that, so he's now got four for 105 off his 24 overs. And New Zealand this morning have been able to wind things up. Pakistani uh, batting, getting through to 344. So just 10 runs added this morning. Basit Ali getting to his first test ton, but Waka Yunus and Amir Nazir not hanging around for long. And Pakistan all out for 344. New Zealand left to rue those six dropped catches on the first day. Just Danny Morrison and Chris Pringle used today. Pringle getting Basit Ali a richly deserved wicket after having four catches dropped from his bowling. And Danny Morrison with the most wickets, four for 105. When New Zealand opened with Brian Young and Blair Hartland, New Zealand's best opening partnership in the series so far is three. looking shot from Young, not particularly well timed with the first run of the innings. So the New Zealand innings underway with that single from Brian Young. And he gets underway as well. So that's a nice feeling for both the New Zealand openers, they're both underway. Well played by Hartland, he should get two for this. 
Basad Ali sprinting back. And Hartland gets a couple of runs from a solid push. Good shot from Brian Young. That's the first boundary of the innings. And he's out. He's hit it away and has been caught at backward point. So Blair Hartland is dismissed for just three and New Zealand at 12 for one. Well, absolutely amazing. This one is wide and short from Waka Yunus. Blair Harton actually whacks it pretty well, but straight to that man at point. And Bastardi takes the catch, and unfortunately Blair Harton doesn't keep it down. He's out. New Zealand's the first wicket. He's out for three, and New Zealand 12 for one. Here we see the dismissal of Blair Harton. And Glenn Turney was explaining really it was a bit of a late decision from the opener to cut and uh, that may be the reason why he hit it straight in the air to Basad Ali in that point position. And Young plays another magnificent shot. The second boundary for Brian Young and that fairly sped to the fence. Driving. Good shot. It should run away for four. In fact, it will. Struggling a little uh, out there on the boundary. Keeping it away, square of the wicket on the leg side. And they'll pick up a couple here. And he's driving it well. Chase for Ati Throff. And two runs for Jones. He's 12 now. Aman is here to continue. Well, it's a good straight hit from Jones. He's hit that beautifully. Not much follow through, so they'll have to run. And three runs taken. Oh, it's hit beautifully by Jones. What a magnificent stroke. And once again, that was very straight, even though the ball was pitched so wide. And Jones goes for it. And he hits it very well indeed. There. And Young brings up the New Zealand 50. And it's taken them just 13 overs to get to 50. They've lost Hartland. Oh, he's got it very fine. And he's got it away for four. He gets plenty of bat on that. And that's a beautiful shot. Four. Stroke from Brian Young. Big chase for Rossi Macron. And uh, two runs taken by the New Zealand batsman. Oh, beautifully played by Jones. Cleverly stopped by the fieldsman. And uh, two runs taken by Andrew Jones. He's up to 46. Jones thumps it out into the covers. It's gone through. And this will be 50 for Andrew Jones. Yet another test half century. Well, an excellent half century to Andrew Jones. He really has played superbly in the Simmons. As he does always, he's a great fighter. Played some extremely brilliant shots. Here's the Jones wagon wheel. So those cover drives. Here we have those three cover drives there, which were played from Waka Yunus. And the last one, too, from uh, Amir Nazir. Good and solid-looking defensive stroke from Andrew Jones. And the players turn and leave for lunch here on the second day. It's been a very good morning for New Zealand. After Pakistan were dismissed for 344, the addition of just 10 further runs. And despite the early loss of Blair Hartland, New Zealand go to lunch at 78 for one with Andrew Jones through to yet another Test 50 and Brian Young on 20. Good cricket watching conditions. Oh, that's in the air. It's uh, going to run away for four. It went in the gap between second slip and gully. It wasn't totally convincing. Oh, it's 
looks like a nick behind, but it was a no ball call. He got a fine edge. It went uh, through to the keeper. Straightforward catch, but that's no use if you've overstepped. Down the leg side, a loud appeal. I think that came from the pad. The umpire agrees. It's a bit of pressure on Mr. Francis again, but we'll see quite clearly that this ball flicks Brian Young's back leg, and that's why he withdraws it away so quickly. I think it probably hurt a wee bit as well. It's hit the calf area of the back leg and flown down the leg side. Nice appeal, but for no result. KG Francis. Oh, in the air. He's put it down. Third slip. Well, this is good bowling from Waza Makram. He set Brian Young up with the in-swinging Yorkers from around the wicket, and then he's angled one across his outswinger, which is superb bowling. Look at it go in the air, and Young follows it. Plan is perfect until the last part. Yeah. And that's a very good shot from Young. He likes that. Oh, it's a Yorker, but he's played it away. He's played it very well too, Young, and he brings up the New Zealand 100 with a good stroke from Wazzy Macram. Yeah. And he's driving well, and he gets a three extra cover. It might not go either way. Sally Mullet's pretty quick. But Young again showing that he's got strokes, which you're sure, getting some overthrows too with the return from Sally Mullet, breaking the stumps at the bowler's end, and a bonus third run. And New Zealand batting well in reply to Pakistan's 344. Well, that's close, and that's out. Brian Young has trapped LBW by Amin Azir, and New Zealand lose their second wicket at 109. Well, Brian Young's had a few shouts against him for LBW, and Amin Nazir gets this one to swing into the right hand, and for me, that one there is moving far too much and would have gone down leg. Very dicey decision on away against Brian Young. He's out for 38 LBW, and he's down 109 for two. Jones goes after that. That's a free hit for Andrew Jones. And he puts it away with no problems at all. Ken Rutherford uh, certainly likes playing here at Lancaster Park. We remember his performance against Australia here recently. performance by the New Zealand batsman has been very, very encouraging indeed. And if ever there was a need for a reminder about the value of Andrew Jones, uh, well, there's a, a single to Andrew Jones, and there's overthrows, and the ball has gone for four, it's five. We're running off about 35 odd metres. And, oh, that was a very good ball, it swung in, it was fast, probably about the 135 mark. Oh, it's in the air. He's gone. He's nicked it. Well, Waka Yunus has the last say. Rutherford gone. Well, let's just have a little look at the line of this delivery. It's been a great battle between these two, but Waka Yunus has won it, and Ken Rutherford's not happy. Delivery is about a foot and a half wide of off stump, and it's bounced a bit on Ken Rutherford. He hasn't been able to keep it down. He's chosen to play it, and Inzaman has taken a fine catch at second slip. So Rutherford is gone. He's gone for seven. New Zealand now 134 for three. Let's go back to the Ken Rutherford dismissal. And it was a very fast delivery. It rose, it left him a shade, and took the edge. And there's Waka Yunus. So good effort and uh, good bowling. Plenty of uh, bounce and carry on this wicket. Inzamam, the man who took the catch. Oh, he's off the mark. That was bad fielding. It was uh, pitched up. It was an attempted Yorker. He was equal to the task. It's underway. End of the over. A good one. 135 for three. Oh, it's very good ball again from Wazzy Macram. But it's pressure on, isn't it, Glenn? Uh, it's almost as if New Zealand have wound the Pakistanis up to be able to get them uh, highly competitive. And you don't need much winding. Gone for one. 
And Wazi Makram has his first wicket, so he'll be delighted. But New Zealand now 139 for four it becomes. To see the line here, pitching around about off stump. And that looked out to me. Didn't look too bad, did it? Yeah, so there we go. It's 139 now for four, New Zealand. So the field not changing very much uh, for the new batsman. Although we have seen in the series that Thompson is prepared to go after the bowling. No ball. He's hit it very well too, Shane Thompson. He's got off the mark. And it looks as if it might run all the way towards it, but not quite over the boundary. And so they've run three. Well, it's a Yorker, which is a little down the leg side. But certainly we've seen plenty of evidence of the famous Akram and Eunice Yorkers. Well, this swings a long way, but it is going way down leg side. But look at the amount of swing on that. As Thompson's beaten by a ball outside the off-stop, and that's a magnificent delivery. And Thompson's on his way. A wonderful outswinger from Wacker Eunice, a magnificent ball. And Thompson out for three. Yeah, I think we'll find this was close enough in where he had to play it. Let's just look at the line. Well, it's, it's down that corridor of uncertainty, if you like. And fair enough, I think, that Thompson play at the delivery. Played a defensive shot, beaten by the out movement. And so New Zealand now 147 for five. A ball which is pitching just outside the off stump and swinging away. And Thompson thought he had it covered, but the swing took the ball just to the edge of the bat and not past it. And it nibbled it on the way through to Latif, and that's the end of Shane Thompson. Beautiful ball, though, because it did commit him. And even though if he'd been later in, he might have judged it better and uh, said, well, I can leave that. But early on, it was a bit tough. There's an appeal for LBW. KT Francis walks away. I think he got bat on this. But what a great first delivery to bowl. The in-swinging Yorker, or attempt at it, and it does swing. Look, it starts outside off stump, but it's done too much. And I think that Blaine did get a nick on that as well, but the amount that that ball swung was quite disconcerting. Well, another appeal for LBW. This time he's gone. KT Francis said you're in front, Blaine, and you're out. New Zealand 147 now for six. Yes, well... <laughs> It's, it's another attempt at the in-swinging Yorker. He managed to get it across more towards middle and off. And we'll probably see that this one isn't defeating the leg stump. So he got the line right there. And although it's swinging, I don't think Blaine got very far forward. Doing quite a bit. But uh, Blaine... ...on his way for naught. And so New Zealand reeling now at 147 for six. Nicely played by Jones. We'll have time for two. Jones plays it away, and that is the end of the session. A session very much dominated by Pakistan. After New Zealand came back from lunch at 78 for one, they find themselves at T at 157 for six. Back foot. Good looking shot from Matthew Howard and run away for four. There's the old scoreboard here. Technology hasn't caught up with uh, Lancaster Park scoreboard. Oh, that's not a bad in swinger. It would have missed the leg stump. I think it's uh, a bit of a toe crusher. The big in swinging Yorker that just hits the top of the foot. Thank you very much. Look at that ball swing. That's quite surprising. A stump vision should pick that up nicely. Shot, gets runs, times it well. Matthew Hart in first class cricket. He's had about 45 innings and he's averaging just under 20. It's still very early in his career and can probably improve on that. But he's not got the chance to be able to stay there for long. Akram with his Yorker again gets his second wicket and Hart is gone. It's 171 now and seven wickets are down. And Matthew Hart leaves. Well, that's again an illustration of the Yorker from Wazi Makram. Right in the spot. Right in there at middle and leg. In fact, it knocks over middle stump. 
And so Matthew Hart on his way, and now New Zealand, 171 for seven. Here's Matthew Hart with Akram around the wicket, and the ball just keeps on coming at him. It was almost as if it was a missile directed at the foot of the middle stump, and it was guided, and it just came unerringly straight on the bottom of middle stump. Simon Dool likes to take the uh, charge to the bowler. Like that. A lovely shot from Simon Dool. That shows that he's a good player. It's gone very fine. It's gone to the boundary. And let's have a look at the umpire. Four runs. He got a little nick on that. So that was close to being a chance. Rashid Latif dived across. I don't think got a glove on it, though. Well, he's got a hold of that. That's a good stop. Should get three here, which will move Doolan into double figures. Just the third New Zealand batsman to do so. Doolan gives himself some room. And it's Doolan that's take time taking one off the first ball of the over. So that's a slight reversal of roles. And Jones comes down to face. Francis has called for the camera. Let's have a look. Well, Andrew Jones looks well short of his crease there. The ball is direct hit on the stumps. Jones taking a quick single. So now it's up to Brian Aldridge to make a decision. I'm not sure what the delay is all about, really. It looks to me like a pretty clear cut that uh, Andrew Jones is out. I'm sure we'll see the red light. There it is. Yes, he was well out. So Andrew Jones's fine innings has come to an end. Run out for 81. An excellent throw by the captain, Sully Malik. And uh, New Zealand lose their eighth wicket at 186. Yes. A confident Danny Morrison, fresh from 40 out of Wellington, gets off the mark from the first 40 faces. He's actually hit wicket. Well, that would have been an unusual dismissal. He went back, and I think his boot might have gone back and taken the stance, but it's a no ball. Yes, he slips there, as you see, and puts his foot on the wicket. So it's out, hit wicket, if it's a normal ball. Look at that there, just slipping there, the old rubber-soled shoes. One, turning for two, Danny Morrison, and comfortably taken as well. Ball struck on the pad, that's out. Says umpire Francis, Simon Dool, trapped leg before. So New Zealand have lost another wicket. Waka Yunus has struck again. Well, this is pretty quick delivery, and once again, it's the attempted at Yorker. Simon Dool staying on the crease line, really. It's pretty close. I think uh, that's a fair comment, Ian Smith. So Simon Dool makes his way off the park, 198 for nine. And there's uh, one more wicket available to Wakar Yunus, who now has five. And he's played this away down to third man, Danny Morrison. He'll pick up one. And there's the 200 for New Zealand. It's been heavy going the last 50. He's gone. Chris Pringle giving himself some room. And the off stump is struck. Waka Yunus has picked up six wickets and the New Zealand innings is wrapped up. Well, once again, you have to admire the, how accurate they are. They're attacking those stumps the whole time. And six wickets for Waka Yunus. And this is really sums up the whole thing. Dead online. Off stump. Chris Pringle just giving himself a bit of room to hit it through the offside. But that was far too quick. And Chris Pringle is out for a duck. New Zealand are all out. And Waka Yunus, the main destroyer, finishes off in style. 
So there we are. The Pakistanis make their way off the park. Waka Yunus, the, the man of the moment, six for 78. He gets a big hand from this uh, crowd at Lancaster Park. It's not a very big one, but they applaud. Into Karbalam, the manager, and uh, New Zealand all out for 200. 109 for one it was when Brian Young went to Amir, and from there the New Zealanders were swept aside. Nine for 91 they lost to irresistible fast bowling. Jones was 50 not out at lunch, had a quiet time from then on, and ran himself out at 81 at extras, equal second top scorer. Accuracy, pace, hostility and stamina rewarded again. Wakar punished early, in fact was conceding nearly six and over before lunch, came storming back in the afternoon with a very hostile spell, six for 78, and Wazim Akram bowled superbly for his two for 54. So 144 the difference. Pakistan had eight overs to bat before stumps. The openers Amir Sahail and Saeed Anwar, and we pick up the action with Morrison bowling to Saeed. New Zealand desperately seeking a couple of wickets before they go off for the end of the second day's play. They've got eight overs to bowl. two slips in the gully in there but uh, the keeper Blaine makes a lot of ground and perhaps it was yes probably falling short and making up for that one that he emptied out in the first inning so straight away the Pakistanis lose their first wicket Saeed Anwar for a duck just slashing wide very ambitious shot so early and Morrison will take it Three slips in now. One. The first run of the innings, Amos Sahal has to hurry, but eventually completes it satisfactorily for him. And it's one for one. Nadi Froef gets his first runs. And it's two for one. That's nicely played away by Amos Sahal. Chase for the New Zealand field. Two runs taken by the left hander, and that's the end of the over. Four for one. Brian Young takes the catch, and Amos Ahail is out. New Zealand strike again. Well, Amir Sahail trying to get through to stumps tonight, and naturally aggressive. That went outside the off stump from Dool. Straight to Brian Young at second slip. In the pocket, it goes, and Pakistan are four for two. Night Watchman has come to the wicket for Pakistan, Akram Raza. He's already had a bat today. And he's here because of this. Well, off the back foot, Sahel trying to hit it through the offside square of the wicket, and straight to the safe hands of Brian Young at second slip. In an excellent wicket for New Zealand. Two chances and two catches taken. Oh, yeah. So Raza is off the mark. Off the last ball of the over from Dool. A successful one for him. And it's five for two. Pakistan starting with a lead of 144, having to bat for eight overs. Saeed Amwar gave it the all-or-nothing shot in the first over, and Blaine took the edge, and Sahail out as well before stumps. Morrison looked very sharp this evening, a good line hurrying the shot. Chris Pringle shared the new ball, and they, along with Simon Duell, will come back tomorrow with another bite at it. Welcome to One Word of Sports highlights of this third day of the third and final test in the Bank of New Zealand series between New Zealand and Pakistan, Lancaster Park in Christchurch. Gloomy start today. We lost uh, an hour and a half to bad light and drizzle. However, 83 overs to be bowled on a pitch still good for batting. Pakistan going in with a lead of 152 with eight second innings wickets in hand.
scheduled six hours of the day. And Pakistan resuming at 8 for 2. So, the first run of the day, taken from the last ball of the first over, Ati Froh goes to 4, and it's 9 for 2. sweetly that Morrison on his follow through to see perhaps puts out a foot but really didn't adjust at all <laughs> in fact I think he was quite happy that the ball didn't hit him it would have been on the ankle or the shin so quite 
quite happy for it to go through for four. Some pretty aggressive stuff there. Yes, 
Well, his choice and option this time is spot on. But we've seen Basadali being prepared to play the full shot. The ball not short enough. In fact, that was barely short enough. But he did get a lot of bat on it. We've seen him sky it just over Midwicket's head on more than one occasion. Well, it's a lovely shot. He did play it with control. at that and although Blaine catches it there was interest from the New Zealanders but 89 for five one, one, one. Well, once again it was in the air for a while and when five is quickly and that's the rugby and he's going to the third umpire is Steve Dunn well it's a great throw for mid off from deep mid off from Paul Unwin, you see there the replay and Pasadali's bats almost past the wickets and the green light is predicted. Paul Unwin's done a marvellous job in the field. He did that in the first innings. Lighted again. And that's a nice shot from his arm. Shane Thompson chasing him, but he'll have to give it away. And that's four runs. Pulls it and plays it well too. very quickly and the batsmen have time for three runs you know, loose delivery from Chris Pringle you can see it drag him see him drag it down short well outside the off stump and Bassett only does very well to pull that through mid wickets a lot of other batsmen might have tried to play it through the offside he obviously prefers the pull Play that 
good shot. There's no cover out there, no deep wide mid on or deep mid wicket. And didn't he launch himself into it? I see it coming, and there's plenty of body to go into that shot. And it went a long way up in the rows of terraces up there. Big strong man into Nunnal Huck. In fact, it's going to be a test. to Mark Hastings, the substitute fielder for Blair Hartland. And so now Pakistan, 133 for six. Oh, that'll be six. That's a huge hit. Basinelli shows why he's such a strong player on the onside. <laughs> Morrison not able to get this one high enough. And Basadali into position very quickly, helping it on its way. He's prepared to hit it up. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to hit that one for six. And although it did carry a good distance towards the fence, perhaps two-thirds of the way. And now we see a fielder going back there. Now Hartland is going back to deep square leg. But will Basadali fall for that one? Well, that means that a big gap. Sam Morrison bowls outside the off stump. That's good sense. Oh, it's in the air, but it's going to fall short. So a strange shot from Vasadali. Why he tried that, who knows? 141 for six. Yes! Falls for the single very quickly there. And Shad Latif has another run. Talking about sort of 
and nothing shot. Racing have made up his mind to, to go after this stop halfway. The bat hit the ground and the ball just gently lobbed off the face back to Matthew Hart. He accepted it. They're not going to get too many easier caught in bowls than that. And Rashid Latif caught in between two minds. He's gone now for three. And 54 for eight. Matthew Van Waka Yunus at uh, the other end. There he is there. And he's there because of this. Yes, Gentle delivery, really. He's gone to try and hit inside out through the offside and crept up a wee bit on him. He's succeeded only in hitting the ground. You see the puff of dust there as he's done it, and the ball just lobs back to Matthew Hart. Very soft dismissal for Rashi Latif. He'll be disappointed with that. New Zealand is delighted. Sprinkle. It's in the air. It's just clear on the field. Held back on the shot. Yes, held back on the shot because Chris Pringle held back on the delivery. It goes for it this time and gets hold of it very well indeed. And is it... Oh. As predicted, John, eight down Pakistan. And was a from not a lot of faith in the other two to hang around for him. He's going to get stuck in while he can. I should almost get the feeling he's relieved there right down, so he's got a good excuse to work it out. Almost the free line suggests this is in the slot for him, and he's hit through the line of the ball. He's angling across him, he's just hit straight back through it, and he's timed it very well. It goes again, he's got this one high. I think it's up on the terraces. Yes, it is. Well, this is the slide ball again. Terrace is about 25 rows back. It's the end of the over. Ball in the air. It's just dropping short of the field. Ken Rutherford can't get to it, but he gets one anyway. Three if they were to bowl out Pakistan for the score that they have now, 179 for nine. batting in the day by their fast scoring standards was cautious against New Zealand bowling that stuck to the task well. Basit Ali's 67 off 110 balls, he was the top scorer, but at no stage did we see the dominance that we've seen earlier in the series, and Pakistan setting New Zealand a target of 324 to win. And Danny Morrison ended up with eight wickets in the test, and that's a good reward for his hard work, responding to the challenge posed by the absence of Simon Dool, who went off with a muscle problem with his back in the first session. And Matthew Hart, three for 47, his best test figures. So New Zealand set 324 to win, 18 overs to be bowled with four stumps, and we start the New Zealand second innings with Wasim Akram bowling to Brian Young. Yes, 18 overs remaining in the day's play, but uh, Jeff Crow looks to me as though the line is not great at the moment. Wouldn't be surprised if the New Zealand uh, batsmen don't approach the umpires at some stage. Well, certainly if it's off the light, I'm sure the Kiwis will take it. There's not much they can do, really, in 18 overs. Can't get too far advanced if you like in getting this target. And there's still two days left in the test. So their main aim is just to get through these remaining overs tonight. Oh, yeah. Rakai Yunus does the fielding, and there are two runs. 
to get started. Point one overs bowled before bad light forced them off. Three apiece for Young and Hartland, and New Zealand needs another 315 to win. So, Kamar Ahmed, your assessment of the day? I think there's no doubt in my mind that the third day's play was fully dominant. That's on one word of sport. I hope we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us on One World of Sport for highlights of this fourth day of the third and final test in the Bank of New Zealand series. New Zealand against Pakistan, a warm summer's day in Christchurch, a pitch that was still good for batting, and New Zealand chasing 324 to win, starting this day at nine without loss. New Zealand's openers, Brian Young and Blair Hartland, and we pick it up with the first ball of the day, Waka Yunus to Brian Young. First ball of the day. Right. And good looking defensive shot from Brian Young. So we're underway. So there's the formula. Two days to go. And New Zealand got plenty of time to get these runs. And here's a couple to get the day underway. Pushed out on the leg side. And well played. Pushing it down, the wide of mid on, there's no mid on there, so it's a long chase for short leg and a comfortable two. Popping yep. it away behind square, he should get a couple here. Oh, that's a good shot too, that's a lovely shot. And that's going to bring the first boundary of the morning, Wacker Humes can get that away. catch and Hartman's looking and I think he might be going he seems to not be sure himself but he's going he looked to see that the catch had been made Katie Francis didn't have to do anything he just stood there with the arms folded and Blair Hartland having a good look around now he's talking to Steve Dunn to confirm that all is well and the catch was made so this is the first New Zealand wicket close in push down the line just a good delivery it looked as though it was juggled there by Inzamam but he held on to it we can get a better look at it here no, we won't. We'll see that the reaction of Akram instead. But see Hartland there looking to square leg to Steve Dunn. He got the nod from Steve Dunn. So he's on his way and he's in 22 for one. And Andrew Jones, his last test innings, is getting a tremendous uh, support from the crowd here in Christchurch. Jones gets his first runs and they played very well. Down to third man, there's no one there. And Jones gets four off his first ball. And that's where Glenn Turner said that he can, so he's going to get four for Wacker from his first ball too. Andrew Jones has come out in his last test knock. He's had two balls and hit two fours. Well, Waka Yunus is bowling to only two on the onside. And as soon as he bowls it close in to the batsman, then it's help yourself. And Jones, although only been there for two deliveries, uh, takes toll of that very easily. Look at the line of this. Close to his pads. Help yourself. Jones just looking around to see whether there's been any change in the onside field. There's not been. Just the two players there, a catcher and a fine leg. Yep. 
That's a better line, but Jones has hit that pretty well too, so he's getting past Malik. Well, we know that Andrew Jones is not a carefree Cavalier type of batsman. He's a very sure and circumspect one, but he's got some lovely strokes, and we're seeing them today. Yeah, so once again, we're seeing Jones hitting the ball straighter through the offside than not previous innings. He did it in the first innings here as well. But certainly on most other occasions, Jones tends to hit the ball squarer than he's showing today. Perhaps he ought to start his career over again. It's this partnership of Young and Jones. Uh, it was very successful in the first innings. And just starting off pretty well in the second. Yeah. Nicely played by Young through the gap. The outfielder remains uh, fairly slow, certainly out in that area anyway. And uh, two is the score for Brian Young. Nice shot by Jones. Just pushed away down through mid off. And looking for a third run and uh, making it quite easily. Well run. So Amir Nazir to continue. Good straight shot. No real power, but he should pick up a couple. Brings up the New Zealand 50. So there's Jones's method of dismissals over his long career for New Zealand. An interesting one there is the, uh, the R there. Clipped away. Good looking shot. Long boundary out there. Won't threaten the boundary. Got a couple more. It's uh, clipped away, fine, and it'll run away for four. The fine leg's too wide, so Andrew Jones picks up four. Well, Ekram's having another over, and he's going to be conceding a couple of runs. Jones is looking for the third, but declining it. that well too that he runs for him. Harman Azir will get to it before it gets to the boundary. But two further runs for Brian Young. And that ball swung. He got it to swing in to the right-handed. Well, it's driven very well by Young. That's a lovely shot. A big chase for Harman Azir. The outfield's got a bit quicker today, but it's still not quite quick enough to get the ball all the way. But three runs, and that will give Brian Young a lot of satisfaction. appears to have taken an early lunch. Really looked all that comfortable out there today. There we go, there's the uh, partnership of 50 runs between these two. They put on 97 in the first innings. Well played by Young. Shah Muhammad has a long run, and the batsmen should have time to get back. No, they decide against taking any risks, and they settle on two off the last ball of the over. Single taken by Andrew Jones down to Shah Muhammad. Young looking to turn has taken on the pad, no appeal. And Young turns, heads for the dressing room. And New Zealand needing 324 to win this test match. They've had a solid morning, losing Blair Hartland, but going to the break at 76 for one. Brian Young and Andrew Jones have played superbly well in this morning's session as they did in the first innings. The key thing is to start again after lunch uh, and just battle the way through again. There's a quick single for Andrew Jones and is this a repeat of the first innings? They've called for the third umpire. Andrew Jones run out for 81 in the first innings and Steve Dunn calling for the third umpire television replay. Well, Jeff, you said a replay of the first innings. There we see a replay of Andrew Jones' first innings dismissal being run out. And Andrew Jones gets the red line again. It's hard to believe, really, isn't it? What a disappointment. His last test innings and in both innings at Lancaster Park, he's been run out. What a sad end to what is a remarkable New Zealand career. His record shows that he's one of the best. He's a great player, Andrew Jones, and I'm sure this crowd at Lancaster Park will be standing in the ovation to him to salute him. 
He's one of New Zealand's finest test players. There he is, run out for 26. A tragic end. Look at the Pakistanis. They know how good a player that man is and how difficult he is to dismiss and uh, what he has been to New Zealand cricket. And uh, certainly the crowd there acknowledging Andrew Jones. Great player. And Brian Young has just hit a four. Oh, here's the run out. We should have a look at that first. Disaster. Just, just a carbon copy of the first innings. Same result, same margin short, and the same red light for Andrew Jones. Do you mean? Following ball, Brian Young hit a four. Nice drive down on the onside, but what a tragedy for New Zealand. Uh, he'll be sick to his deep, the depths of his stomach over this one, I can tell you. This will be his last memory of his last innings in Test cricket, and this is the end result. What a way to finish. But Edgy is going to get off the mark, though. There's no third man down there, and it's going to run away for four. Struck on the pad. He's a little too far forward. Driving. Good looking shot. Got a run away for four. Well, there's a man at cover and a man at mid off, and they stood and looked at each other as if to say, You go fix this because there's no way in the world we're going to stop it. Sully Malik, the skipper. Interesting to see the Pakistanis under some pressure. chance man in at short cover dived away to his left i think it may have gone to hand but he put it down anyway if it did I'll hold up again while the i think the fine leg is now being finely tuned oh, good Yorker. Oh, problems for brian young again this over but last ball of the last over he went back and talked about a man in at short cover and he was in business in zamam ul -Huk. Brian Young going back, just a little bit of bottom hand in the shot, causing it to carry. And Rutherford goes for the big hit over the long line, and how far has that gone? That's gone a long way. Well, the shot's on. Uh, Reza is bowling largely to an offside field and not on the onside. Well, he flights it. It was outside the off stump. But Rutherford got close enough to the pitch of the ball to be able to fetch it onside. Look, look at the line here. He gets across to it and down. His momentum going forward. You just have to watch that he doesn't get further outside off stump and leaving a gap. It's found the gap. Young gets his 50. Well, he showed considerable skill today getting his 50. That's just the beginning. He realises that the job is far from done from New Zealand's perspective and must now drive himself on. And there's that one boundary through extra cover and uh, one through mid on as well. Yes. And he went pretty wide then, but Young hit it well. And this is going to be his third boundary. The outfield's speeded up with the afternoon sun. And Young hit that well. It's the end of the over, 108 for two. Oh, it's driven and driven well through extra cover. Sally Malik should get it. And they complete two, which ends the over. It's 114 for two. Didn't quite have control of it, but there's no one there. And a chance for two. They'll have to hurry again, but Young judged it well. Yeah. Got a swing there. Rutherford, oh, dear me. He would have been caught short had that struck. Jeff Howarth breathes again. Oh, he looks pretty calm and collected there, Grant. Here's Akram bowling the other one. Look at that. Beautiful delivery, that. And look at the athleticism there of Akram. Fantastic stuff, really. Rutherford was gone a million. He'd uh, lost his footing. <laughs> Loud LBWPL, and that's the end of Ken Rutherford. The ball is swinging. And Rutherford walks away, not entirely convinced about it, but the Pakistanis have the third wicket. Well, let's have a look at this LBW decision. On the uh, decision of KT Francis, Akron bowls wide of the crease. Ball swings. It sort of pitches about middle and leg. But only if it about leg stump, if at all, Grant. Pretty marginal, Jeff. 
Bit of misleads done too, couldn't it? The umpire said no. Rutherford's gone. 119 for three. Ekram and Sunny Malik, the Pakistani captain, looking to attack. Mark Greatbatch outside the off stump. And Greatbatch uh, has his first run. Again, it was a swinging delivery. Oh, done by another beauty. Swinging away outside the off stump. End of the over, 122 for three. Oh, that's a beauty. That didn't miss the off stump by very much. Great batch having all sorts of problems with Waka Yunus. Yes, Waka downwind. Pretty quick delivery. That one really didn't move a lot. It actually uh, just missed off stump. That's well played by Brian Young. He's got that through. And he's done a very good job for New Zealand. And it's played away for more runs. More streakily this time. That's well fielded down on the third man boundary. Well, in some ways it was fairly well worked away, but I think full marks more to the bowler there. So looking about to bring about a dismissal round about that slips galley area. Well, one could argue that that was four runs. Any part of the body touching the boundary with the ball in hand would be four runs. Full toss this time, worked away through square leg. And goes all the way for four. Well, it's in the air and it's caught. Inzamam has it. Waka Yunus is delighted and Great Patch has to go. I suppose it was inevitable. The edge would have to come. It did and Inzamam did the rest. Yes, well, it did appear as though it was a matter of time. His feet together just launched himself at it. Big outside neck driving it, attempting to drive through the covers and Great Patch is on his way. And New Zealand now 133 for four. Here's the ball that finally dismissed him and Although I think he contributed to that a bit because the ball didn't seem to do anything unpredictable after it started its line. It was just a bit of a lunge towards it, wasn't it? But previously he'd had the ball coming to him at, at, at intense pace and just changing its line at the last moment with that late swing that Waka Yuna seems to get. Well, that gets Thompson off the mark. And he plays it pretty well through me. We'll get a chase for Salim Malik. Two runs to end the over. It's 135 for four. And he goes for that one, does Young, and he gets it very fine. That might beat the player down there. Oh, look at that for pace and for late swing. Oh, he's hit that well. It was a wild ball. And it was hit pretty well by Brian Young. They come back for the second to end the over. It's 143 for four. Well turned by Young. I see Macron just ambling after it. He knew full well they were going to get two. Well, that's played nicely away by Thompson. Beautifully timed shot. It's starting to slow noticeably, and the batsman will get three. Powerfully drawn by Thompson. And that's another four for Shane Thompson. Shane Thompson on 18. He's had mixed fortunes in this series. A bit of problem with his footwork. Time to time, coping with these quicks. Oh, a little edgy. We get a couple of runs. Wasn't a chance. In the air, and it's clear of the field. Should run away for four. And it does. Clipped away. That's a good looking shot. Wazzy Macron picks up, but not before they come back for two. These are the two bowlers now that they need to try and milk if they can. 
before the strike force of Pakistan comes back at them. Still 147 needed. So still a long way off. It's driven in the air and it just gets past two fielders. So Thompson, with a bit of luck, is going to profit by three runs anyway. Now, that, was he leaning on the boundary when he picked that ball up? Well, I think be he interesting was. interesting to see if he did have his hand on the fence. It's not a boundary fence, I take it, down there. And Thompson's going for a big shot through mid-wicket. He's pulled that very hard, and it's into the boundary for four. And so these two came together when it was 133 for four. That's when Great Batch was out, and that's the 50 partnership for them from 69 minutes, 109 balls. He goes wide and he's pulled again. Thompson gets another four. So the break didn't do Shane Thompson any harm. And two fours ends the over from Armin Azir and brings Thompson to 38, New Zealand 187 for four. Change in the field there. And the Osman are bowling into the breeze. Thompson lifting and getting it away down through long on. In fact, it was straight, and the fieldsman lost it all together. Oh, good Yorker. Well, he bowled a lot of short ones, and then the inevitable Yorker. Swings it. Oh, just over the head of mid-wicket. It'll run away for four. It's a long boundary out there, but it makes it all the same. Looking shot off the back foot, he's a call for two and he'll get two. So 200 up for New Zealand. Ryan Young on 86. That might be Shane Thompson's 50. I think it is. Yes, he's coming back for two. Shane Thompson, 50 runs here at Lancaster Park, a good hand. Uh, over the top, is it? Yes, it's cleared the field. He's hit it a good deal better than I thought. In fact, he's hit it for six. That was uh, a great shot. Well, I looked very nervously at the man at mid-off here because I thought he was lining it up. He was lining it up all right. Watch it come back from the spectators because he hit it very well, Thompson. Got under it. Used his feet well. And hit that way back into the terraces. Cleared the fence easily. You see Akram Raza, he knows where it's going. He didn't bother to really get too excited about things. And the spectator summed it up. Oh, that was in the air. It was just wide of second slip. It's going to run away for four. But it was a bit streaky. Yeah. Comes a long way across again and hits it square on the onside for a couple of runs. Ryan Young's interested in three. He's going to come back. And he's going to get it. Well, that's great running because his shot was well placed. Only two men on the onside and finally get a long run. Thompson picks up three. 221 for four. Yeah. Oh, he's hit that very well. Thompson's got that through square leg. Barsadale is very quick across the ground. And three taken. Now Rashid... Latif just hurling the ball at the stumps there too. Young has batted now for, for almost six hours, 350 minutes. He's been secure. And with Thompson scoring runs well up the other end, it's been very good progress. Yes, come on. No hesitation there. Up the back foot, another chase for Salim Malik. And that brings up the 100 partnership too. 233 the score. They came together when Great Batch was out at 133 for four. And so of the 100 runs that they've added, Brian Young has seen Shane Thompson do most of the scoring. He's 70 not out. Goes after this, gets it through. Field's been going rounds and just manages to stop it inside the boundary. They come back for two. And that takes Young, Young up to 98. It's 2.36 for four. And uh, now Sunny Malik brings the man in from short square to short point on the offside. 
So there's a region around Backwood Square. It's open. He works it away. There it is. A maiden test century for Brian Young. to settle down again there's still a lot of work to be done well it was good to see Jeff the whole of the Pakistan side applauded that innings for Brian Young at least that's always a good sight they obviously appreciate how good it innings that was let's go back and uh, relive that uh, great moment for Brian Young this yes, for Malik put a man over the offside and uh, Kept that uh, area around the square leg area vacant, and there's Brian Young. He put it down there and acknowledging the crowd who are standing in ovation to this fine innings. That's a lovely shot through the covers. That'll go all the way. Four runs. Goes after it. And it's a right of the fence for four. Short and wide, and Thompson dealt with that one. Was it Macron? Relaxes between overs. Yeah. Good looking shot. Won't quite go to the fence. But they're uh, running back for three. Well played. another short one he's hooked away and he's got it remarkably well and it's away for four yep. a lovely shot off the back foot bit of a chase out here for Malik three more to Young oh, the pitch is certainly playing very well indeed it's very placid Ending off again, but he's got it through the slip cordon. And another run. Top ever in Tess. Well, that's not a good ball, and it's uh, cut away. It may have been a drop chance. Was that in the air all the way? I'm not sure. We'll have another look at it. Well, a few hands went in the air. There's a little, perhaps a little uh, signal of apology there. We'll see this drop short outside off Stump Thompson. Gave it a good clout, and yes, we'll see it is a chance. Absolutely. Oh, swung away. That may be six. I think it is. Yes. Six runs. Absolutely no doubt that that was six as soon as it left the bat. Short, dragged down, outside leg stump. And this is a gift for Shane Thompson, and he accepts it readily. Not really getting into the wicket at all in his ear. And Thompson just launches into that, helps it's on its way, and that's well over. Driving. Oh, lovely shot. That's going to run away for four. certainly get two no. quietly forward and that's the end of the day's play and Steve Dunn says stumps so a big hand from Ken Rutherford marvellous effort from the New Zealand batsman 277 for four New Zealand has worked very hard today. Brian Young batting for 401 minutes. And what a gutsy display that was to take on the best test bowling combination in the world and bat for that long. Jones, Rutherford and Great Batch went in a 57-run period. Young and Thompson have added 144 for the fifth wicket. And Young's 100 in 283 balls. Thompson showing plenty of heart. And New Zealand has 47 to get. 
And Salim Malik under pressure for the first time in this series. And for the first time, Wazim and Waka not able to respond. Wazim hasn't been as consistently difficult as we've seen earlier in the series. Waka not getting the ball to move as extravagantly as the first innings. And no success for any of the four other bowlers tried. So working away out there. Well, one of the areas where New Zealand has had problems previously in the series is playing the short ball. And I think Brian Young has demonstrated throughout this innings and throughout the series, really, his technique against it is pretty good. Keeps his eye pretty well focused on the ball until the last minute and evades it very well. Wake. Getting in behind it nicely. So Brian Young on to 120 now. 312 balls, batted all day yesterday. Oh, he's bowled! Brian Young is bowled! So Wazim Akram has got through. Tony Blaine gets set to go out there, but New Zealand have lost their opener. Brian Young for 120. Well, join the Pakistan camp. They know they're back in it now. And Brian Young just pretended about going back. A little bit full and it hurried through on him and an inside edge and the stumps go all over the place but Brian Young a magnificent effort 120 he's in 287 for five so Tony Blaine out there now he's taken guard uh, just a few adjustments in the field and has this game got a few twists and turns yet, Ben Smith? Well, it has, and uh, we, we always knew that uh, Pakistan wouldn't give it away. Confidently forward. Good over, comes to an end, 287 for five. Let's look at this again, an inside edge. Brian Young back onto the stumps. Delivery may have been a little bit too... Maybe a little bit too full to go back to, John. I think that's where the judgment the error was made. Previously, Young had been uh, quite good at going forward to those deliveries. Just went back and hurried him up a wee bit and the inside edge onto the stumps. So, Waka Yunus. No. Thompson shuffling across. He's coming across quite a long way, but he did so yesterday. now goes back on to Shane Thompson. They've set the trap for him. They're going to bowl short. See if they can get him and play that uh, hook shot. There's two men down there, one at fine leg and one at backwards square as well. So there's one of them. It's Tamir Sahal waiting down there. And further around we see the picture there. The man at fine leg. So the trap is there. Jonas now on Thompson, he's the man in. Lane just joining him. Well, that's a little wide. It was quite a round arm delivery, in fact. Waka Yunus has uh, got a couple of approaches to the wicket. One that's uh, quite an angled one, and the other one a straight one, but to Shane Thompson. Out there on 97. And it's not a bad average, is it, uh, Ian? Well, he started off... Uh, his very first test match, he got a good score. I think it was a not-out score as well. And that helps the averages. But uh, it's always good if you can get the average going with a, you know, with a 40 or 45 in your first test and then uh, hover around there. You're going to have a good career. Mm. Mm, it's uh, not too badly directed. End of the over, 287 for five. to uh, let it go by so uh, after that bright first over uh, Ian things have uh, got a little tighter well that's right I thought uh, Pakistan were very much just going through the motions of uh, getting it over and done with in that first over Akram was sort of half pace certainly that wicket all the spirits have lifted and here's Tony Blaine off the mark pushing it down on the leg side leg by signaled but uh, so he's not off the mark i thought i thought that came off the bat well it was a woody sound there but uh, umpire francis did signal the leg by just a 
good indication of how tense it was. It was a good, generous round of applause for the league boy. <laughs> Shane Thompson, a little nerve-wracking perhaps, but uh, it's in the book. Well, probably not the best shot he's played to get to 100. But he'll remember this innings well. It's been a fantastic effort. Here's the wagon wheel for him. Boundaries all round the park, the big sixes. Millicent six down here. He won't re remember this part of it too fondly. The top edge over the keeper. But just as effective. They're in the book and so is that 100. And he's helped New Zealand get to 292. 32 needed. Five wickets in hand. Ah! Tell LBW down leg side it looked to Steve Dunn. And a league by taken which is greeted with thunderous applause here at Lancaster Park. 293 for five now. Good morning, Glenn. Yes, good morning to viewers too. This is going down leg side. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Pitching middle and leg and wouldn't have hit another set. He'll take the leg by. In fact, he got so far across, the question was, was he playing a genuine shot at it? So there's just no room for the Pakistanis to manoeuvre much here this morning. They've only got one slip and a gully on. Look at that, just the one slip in here. And they're deciding that they're going to try and knock the poles over and strangle New Zealand for runs. We've seen that Thompson's prepared to play in a swashbuckling manner again today. Yeah. Oh, he's driven well this time. It's a lovely shot. The outfield's much quicker now on four runs results. Well, this is a top shot. We've got to remember that Shane Thompson's got 105 from just 147 balls. And that was close to him. He didn't need to extend forward to it. But he is a good timer of the ball, and he's clipped that through mid-arm. So that's a, a safer, much safer shot from Thompson. He's lived dangerously. Just managing to get that one over the top of the keeper for his 100. So it's still very tense here. 27 doesn't seem like a lot of runs. Yeah. Oh, he's playing a big shot again. He's got that behind point. That's racing across the outfield. Two falls in a row from Waka Yunus for Shane Thompson. The 300 up for New Zealand. So they're in the home straight now, and Sally Malik's got some problems. Well, this is scintillating stroke play. Just enough width and leant back a little and clipped it behind point. So well, it's pretty slow out there. He's used the pace of the ball. And he's played some fine shots here. 14 fours and two sixes for Shane Thompson. New Zealand 23 needed with five wickets in hand. And how much do they owe to Shane Thompson and to Brian Young? Both making their maiden test centuries. He's playing a swashbuckling knock. And there's another one that's going to fall safely. It went just in front of square and the player, Armour Sahail, was behind square. Sally Malik hasn't got it right this morning. And New Zealand 303 for five. Wazzy Makram will bowl the 101st over of the innings. And so clearly New Zealand have been scoring at an average of just on three and over. And they have 20 runs needed. 21, 21 in fact. 21 needed for victory, five wickets in hand, and Wazzy Makram to bowl to Tony Blaine. And the field placement's interesting for Blaine as well. Although he's got the two slips in the gully, he's got a deep backward square there, Raza it looks like, way out there for the top edge hooking. So there is a run. If it uh, comes in closer here by the umpire, there's a single off his hip. And Pakistan prepared to give that single away in, in the hope, though, that uh, Blaine will attempt the hook. Well, it's a no ball, so there's one more run to the score. And you can see that extras have made a reasonable contribution to the New Zealand total. Wazim Akram just 
not able to get it entirely right this morning or in fact in this innings so 20 runs now needed and 18 no balls well, it's in the air but it's safe and they're going to complete a single blame will have to hurry but eventually rashid latif sees that he's going to make his ground and so they're doing it well there's some dangers out there for them from Wazi Makram and Waka Yunus, but the two batsmen are doing well. Well, there's no one around the bat to catch something like that. Even if they'd had a bat pad in, the chances are he'd have been straighter. It went just behind square and would have probably fallen safely anyway. But they just don't have enough runs to feel confident in having enough close-in catches. See where that ends up there, behind square. And the field are unlikely to be put there anyway. Yeah. Well, he's played that well down through the gully. Third man in, so 306 for five with the single. Yeah. One more valuable run to New Zealand. Thomas Sahail down there. Oh, he's hit that beautifully, Shane Thompson. Once again, it's been hit with precision and fluency. Good timing. And four further runs for Shane Thompson, his 15th boundary. And he's taken New Zealand to 311. They're just 13 away now. Well, if the man had been left out there, he probably would have restricted it to two instead of four. It went in front of square, so it would have always been safe. But Thompson racing along. Well, right. oh, that's another big shot from him, but Amasa Hale's an extra cover. 311, 324 needed, and this man is going to have a bowl by the look of things, Jeff. Well, John, he is the captain. He can make the decisions as he wishes. He obviously feels that he's going to be more dangerous than Waka Yunus. But uh, they really have missed a leg spinner, Mushtaq Ahmed, who's uh, gone home. Here we are. Salim Malik. He certainly gives a bit of flight to uh, Salim Malik. It's a bit of turn. And that's going to be swung away very effectively by Tony Blain. And it's six runs. Well, he dropped it short. It was the googly, and it was punished. There's Tony Blain latching on to this. Very short delivery and smashing it over the square leg fence for six. It was a long hop, really, and uh, one to be hit. Yes, it was a real hit-me job, wasn't it? And uh, he did it well. Salim Malik, the skipper. That's oh. a better ball. Not tempted, Tony Blaine. So, 317. 324 is the magic figure. And uh, Shane Thompson, 117, the man of the moment. Just pushes that down to third man. So one more. We're creeping closer. And what a gutsy performance by Shane Thompson. Came at a very difficult time yesterday, John, and uh, he's, he's played all the shots, taken on the Pakistani fast men, and also a dislocated finger. Yes, that was uh, incredible, wasn't it? Uh, Mark Plummer raced out, put it back into place, but he was so preoccupied with uh, what he was doing, and it was good to see. Good gutsy stuff. Good gutsy Kiwi stuff, John. Liked it. So was he, Mark Rum. Tony Blaine this time, just pushing it into the gully. is it driving got it on the half volley in the end Waka Yunus out there will collect it it's not in too much of a hurry but they get two I say John uh, Sonny Malik's tactics in the second innings of New Zealand's have been uh, pretty semi-defensive if you like haven't they and that may have taken its toll if you like I think so one got the feeling from the outset, Jeff, that he was nervous about uh, this figure that he left New Zealand, 324, and he didn't go in with all guns blazing. He had a bob each way, and we've seen opportunities go begging because of that tactic. Oh, Back foot in, is it? Yes, it is, by the look of things. There's going to be much response going on out there. Let's have a look from side on. Thompson's leg, back leg, just moves outside and gets it back in. He's inside.
Francis says not out. Said Anwar, so uh, we haven't seen him before on the tour. The opening batsman, left armour by the look of things, going to come round the wicket to Tony Blaine. And not a bad line in length. Mm. Last ball of the over. Down the wicket, thumps it, and that's it. Through to the long off boundary for four. Tony Blaine, four runs. New Zealand have won the test here at Lancaster Park. Shane Thompson, the man of the moment, shakes hands. Marvellous effort, 120 runs. Celebrations in the New Zealand camp. Brian Young, the star of the second innings, along with Shane Thompson. Majid Khan shakes hands. Andrew Jones's last test of victory to New Zealand. Tony Blaine, they're all heroes today. So it's all over. And Jeffrey Howarth, a smile on his face at last. Brian Young went in the third over with 10 runs added. It was 287 for five at that stage. Thompson brought up his 100 off 146 balls and some scintillating stroke play this morning. Tony Blaine, 11 not out at the end. And Thompson staying positive, playing his shots, starting on 93, finishing on 120 with 15 fours and two sixes. Wazim and Waka made sure that New Zealand could never relax. They bowled for most of the morning as Salim Malik played his final card. Wazim made the breakthrough to finish with 25 wickets for the series. Waka finished with 18 wickets. The support bowlers unsuccessful and Salim bowling himself at the end. So a five wicket win to New Zealand, but Pakistan wins the Bank of New Zealand series two matches to one. Now we go to the after match presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just seen a tremendous game of cricket, a wonderful victory for New Zealand. But of course, Pakistan have won the series. And to make the presentation for the series, I have with me Wayne Rees, the regional manager of business banking for the Bank of New Zealand. Thanks, Grant. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What a tremendous series we've had. It's been a series of won and lost opportunities. Ken, I'm sure you're extremely proud of the way your team has performed over the last four and a half days to come through and win the third test at Lancaster Park. Congratulations. <laughs> However, tribute must go to Salim Malik and the Pakistani team for their awesome display over the series and some of that powerful bowling that we have seen. It is therefore my privilege to be able to present Salim Malik and the Pakistani team with the Bank of New Zealand Series Award for 1994. Thank you. New Zealand winning this morning by five wickets, the third and final test in the Bank of New Zealand series. And I'm delighted to welcome to our studio both captains, Kim Rutherford and Sally Malik. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Ken, it must feel great after the summer the team's had. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a great moment uh, to win this test match. It has been a difficult summer, full of trials perhaps, but uh, certainly some credit has been derived from this match. I'm very proud of the team, the way they came back into this match, conceding a lead of 144. Yeah, I thought it was a very good performance in, our th in the third innings of the game when we were bowling. I thought uh, our bowlers stuck at the job very well, especially losing Simon and at an early stage of the innings. And really that perhaps was a turning point in the game, of course, then the fine beating by Young and Thompson. Um, Salim, what in fact uh, went through your mind with a lead of, of 144? Well, we thought uh, we could, uh, <clears throat> you know, put them like 450, but we really played uh, poor shots in the, in the second inning. We, we take it, you know, boy, take it very easy because we won the series. So I think uh, we didn't play up to our potential. Do you think there was some, some overconfidence, really, as you went into that second innings? Yeah, of course. As I said, because we won the series, the boys were thought, you know, it's, it's over now, but cricket is a funny game, you know. It's, it's never over. Yes, it is. Well, Ken, 47 to get this morning. What was the mood in the dressing room? 
Very buoyant, actually. Um, quite a bit of humour in the dressing room this morning, which is uh, pretty pretty normal, but even more so than perhaps the usual. And uh, no, boys are pretty confident. Uh, I was, the message was to go out there and play the natural games. I think Shane Thompson showed that. Anything special that you had to say to Brian Young and Shane Thompson before they went out? No, nothing special really. Um, we probably owed it to ourselves to have a test win. It's been a difficult season, as we've mentioned. And, uh, you know, that, all those losses uh, are certainly made up in some way by the, the win today. That's for sure. Well, Salim, uh, perhaps a, a word about Brian Young's innings yesterday. How often does a player bat all day against Waka Yunus and Wazi Makram? I, I must say they really played well. You know, they never uh, at any stage looks, you know, we, we bowled them out. They really played well. And that's the reason we, if we, if we get the early breakthrough like uh, Thompson or, Thompson or uh, Young, we might, might be there. But but they really played well. Do you think tiredness was a, a factor with Waka and Wazim because they bowled long spells this series? Yeah, actually they didn't get the support from the other bowlers, you see. So well, Wazim bowled really at, at least about 32 overs and Waka 25. So in the end they were really tired, you know, when we got four wickets. And uh, Wazim really, Wazim was actually very tired, so. It was a turning point. We didn't get the wicket. And you came on yourself. Are you missing Mushtaq Ahmed? Yeah, especially on this wicket. It was, you know, I'm not a regular leg spinner, but I was turning there. So uh, we, of course, we really miss him. And Ken, we've spoken of the batsmen, but uh, let's go back a couple of days because the bowlers, I thought, did a marvellous job, especially without Simon Dool. Yeah, they did. You know, Danny really showed uh, his experience, the benefit of the last few years, and, and bowled very, very well and kept the pressure on the batsmen. Matthew Hart did a very good job from this end, and uh, I thought the unsung hero was Chris Pringle, even though in terms of wickets he didn't get the return. In terms of bowling economically and applying the pressure from one end, he certainly did that job admirably. That's for sure. And now with the one-day series to look forward to, uh, what will you be working on between now and Thursday? Well, it's going to be good to get home for a couple of days. <laughs> um, Carisbrook should present a very good surface it has done over the last three or four seasons and um, you know we'll be looking to go one up hopefully on Thursday. It's going to be a very competitive one day series and I'm sure the crowds will get out to see it. And Salim, uh, everybody's fit in your team for the one days? Yeah, so far they are, everybody's fit. Okay, and Ken, I can ask you this I guess because you won the game, was it inevitable that the first ball of the game would go to your injured hand? Ironic. Ironic, yes, quite <laughs> so. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming in and talking to us, and congratulations on an excellent game, excellent series too. Yes. So the first time New Zealand has beaten Pakistan at Lancaster Park, and Kamar Ahmed, a reward for positive batting. I think.